What sort of person gets involved in astronomy? Who gets involved in science, technology, engineering, and math? In 1983, Dr. David Way Chambers created a Draw the Scientist test to investigate children's perceptions of the scientist to determine at what age the stereotypical image of the scientist first appeared. The test has been administered to children hundreds of times all over the world, showing that boys draw white male scientists and most of the girls do too. Proving that children begin developing stereotypical views of scientists from a very early age, with a progressively large number of indicators appearing as grades progress. Even Asian students in Taiwan, Hong Kong, and Korea drew white male scientists. Stereotypes such as this affect minorities and STEM professions, including the two SLGTBQ+, adversely. One of the things that strongly influences whether people get into and stay in science is a sense of belonging and a sense of identity as a scientist. And the, you know, one of the things that can really harm that sense of belonging or identity is feeling like uh, you don't, you don't fit the picture of what scientists should be. Um, and not seeing anybody who you identify with on other, you know, on other axes in that role. And so by just massively increasing the number of different kinds of people um, who are visibly doing science, um, that, can, that can help improve that, that sense of belonging and sense of identity. But the marginalization is a real issue. And, and I think there is internal pressure to conform to a sort of stereotype of what a scientist is. You know, someone who's, like you mentioned in the classic lab experiment, who's in a lab coat um, is probably male and is probably um, many other categories. And that, you know, lone genius is the expectation that we hold ourselves to so often. And that's difficult. Because there's a reason there's not a lot of like women that are physicists. There's a reason there's not a lot of people of color that are physicists. There's a reason high level like positions are mainly white men. It's because they don't face as many barriers to get there. And it's dismantling those barriers that needs to be done. Because there's amazing people out there that would that have the, the intellectual capacities and the drive to become um, like top level scientists in any field. I mean, my, what I would say is everybody has a lot of identities and gender is one of them. It's, it's often what people judge you by, but no one identity should be what you get judged by. I'm statist so statistically rare that they don't even count me on you know, diversity surveys. So a lot of it is okay, so who else can I reach out to who isn't counted on the diversity surveys? How can I help them? How can I listen to them? Because I've had very few role models who look exactly like me. So I've had to kind of go out and, you know, find my own way and find my own mentorship. And I know there's a lot of people out there who have the same kind of you know, experience where they've had to, you know, go out and find their own way, find their own mentorship because there aren't people who look exactly like them. I do a lot of work in the outreach stuff, even though a lot of people won't necessarily do that because they want to spend all their time on science and try to get as far as they can that way. For me, it's really, really, really important to spend a huge chunk of my time doing all this outreach to try to normalize the ideas of who gets to be in science and try to get more people involved so that as time goes on, we can get more diverse scientists <laughs> coming in. The problem is you're missing out on opportunities that you know, these people could bring huge advances in science and huge, you know, different innovations. But I guess gatekeeping people out of projects is just holding back potential ideas and potential discoveries that you could make. And it's weird, like, going to, like, a college that's, like, a predominantly white institution. And it's, it's weird because, like, many people think that, like, if if you're if you don't fit the standard of like just being like the basic like white guy 
that like you uh, like automatically have like less knowledge or something for the biggest thing is just that increased visibility because not only is that good for lgbt people to know that they're not alone but it also helps and this is true really for any marginalized group um it helps kind of deconstruct sort of the aura or sense of mystery people might have about members of marginalized groups for them to sort of realize that we are pretty much just like them you know we have similar interests similar career aspirations similar challenges and goals and hopes those stereotypes uh, in our in our minds uh, i think we need to unlearn them you know i think it's it's pretty important that that we all have somewhere some kind of stereotypes because of our upbring, upbringings and how we grew up what people said to us we 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 need to unlearn things and 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 then our perceptions then our perspectives change i think it's it's very important to recognize that better than it used to be is not good enough. A lot of people are like, oh no, like this is a, like a man turning into a woman or a woman turning into a man. But no, they were always that gender. If you really want to understand us and to build an accepting and inclusive environment for us, it's important to let go of your assumptions um, because a lot of what you may have learned just from the media and popular consciousness about us is wrong. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. We're not, you know, we don't fault you for that because we all had to unlearn the same things as well as we came to terms with ourselves. If you're a physicist and do good physics, being gay should have no effect. Well, it does because you have to lead a kind of split life. Um, even if you're totally out of the closet, you have to think of, there's this aspect of my life that's getting nurtured in one way and it's helping me uh, in my mind and uh, filling me with potential and excitement um, for learning. And then there's this other aspect that might not be receiving as much attention. So as a general society, and particularly as, you know, all over, as well as within astronomy, we have to very carefully examine the entire you know, patterns of behavior that cause exclusion and be a little willing to accept the fact that things that we do, even if they were not done maliciously or intentionally, can have unintended side impacts. And I think that science requires open-mindedness of scientists, at least to do science at their best. And that open-mindedness is fundamentally about accepting and including possibilities. We don't necessarily have to be constricted to particular boxes, and there's also a lot more to the picture than what there seems to be. A lot of it is to just be aware for most people and be open. And a lot of people sort of close their minds and, and to try to de-stereotype yourself and don't think of people other than as who they are. And that's the general thing that I can tell every astronomer that they should work on doing is to don't make assumptions about people. In general, in academia, we all need to be more aware of the systemic problems that exist, uh, be more aware of the oppression that is faced by different communities in different ways. And those of us with relative privilege in a particular area need to be more aware of the fact that that privilege exists and how um, how we are trying to correct uh, the uh, the inequities. I decide, well, there aren't very many transgender astronomers and I don't want people deciding how they're going to include me. I want to be at the table. I think that having strong role models is a really good way to improve and that requires time for people from marginalized backgrounds to reach a position where they can be good role models and examples and create opportunities. But recently I've been getting more involved with groups to try to do more outreach to do with like LGBTQ plus type stuff in science. Uh, so for me, it's really, really important because I know growing up, I never really saw anybody that was 
uh, like anyone like me at all in science, which made it a little bit more, you know, difficult to kind of choose that path. Reach out, find people who are, you know, going through similar things. Having peer mentors is really important. Having people who are going through similar struggles, this is easier than it's ever been before. I think that science empowers people and it has the potential to. It does not do so equally. It has a lot of work left to do, but at its best, it can empower people from all backgrounds across the world to you know unite and rise together in pursuit of a common challenge. I think one like the best things about like space and just like astronomy in general is just that like like in space like we're just like kind of like one united group of people just like people curious about learning about like how we came about in the universe and everything. So I'm really happy that again both within the exoplanet community and within the astrobiology community, there have been conscious efforts to raise visibility, to give people spaces where they can say, yes, I'm part of this community, and for us to find each other. In the astronomy side, there were people that were like very big and like forefront about trying to make everybody feel as included as, as possible, um, even if they weren't necessarily in all the different minority groups. And so our, our goal was um, to be um, to take down barriers that helped multiple kinds of people and not just say, okay, we're going to do this for this group and this for this group and this for that group. We're going to say, okay, these are things we can do. They're going to help lots of different people. We don't have to figure out exactly who we're going to help, but we, we have to know that we're going to help people if we take down these barriers. The hard part of science is you're doing something that the human mind has never done before when you're reaching into new frontiers. And that as studies have shown that when you come at that from only one approach, one perspective, that you won't see the entirety of the problem. Compared to a lot of fields in physics, um, astronomy has a larger percentage of like even just, just women in, in, in the field. Um, not like a 50-50, just like a larger percentage compared to other fields in physics. And I find that because of that, there is a lot more people even at like the professor level that are very, very open and trying to make things as diverse as possible. A diverse group with a reasonable number of people who think differently um, can really come up with solutions to problems pretty fast. And, um, and I think that's true of science, that basically getting the more diverse what you really want is people that have different backgrounds who think about problems differently in different ways. You don't want everybody to think the same way. And you're most likely to come with, with an innovative solution. It's just everyone has a different experience and different things to bring to the table. And the more diverse the group, the better. Like there's a lot of people of color in my major and I'm forever grateful for that because they come from different cultures and they have different perspectives on certain issues. And it's awesome. It's just the absolute best thing. You need diversity. That's how you move forward. We have one type of person making and designing things that are built for a world with everybody in it. Um, these products and these systems and these buildings aren't going to be as useful to you know a huge portion of the population, right? I, I love when I get to work with people from outside perspectives. I gain to work with people who are coming in from a different place, coming from a different viewpoint. Getting to have someone who is not just saying yes, we're not just going along the way that is expected. That's the true strength of having diversity within the field, is being able to have access to that much larger of a solution space for some of the challenges that we're facing. Make bold choices in your life if you can. Um, participate in that grand experiment that you know about and see how you can um, bring something to that discussion. And that's how you live without regrets and um, take pride in every small step that you make. Just jump in and do it. And that they might have to remain closeted at first for their own safety or their own well-being, but it's worth doing even if you can't be 100% yourself at first. And give it time, you'll be able to be yourself in time. The best thing is, is that if you really, really love the field, um, don't let anything that anyone says that anyone says stop you from pursuing that. Always push for like your goals or what you believe in despite like 
like the stereotypes that people might push against you. You shouldn't be afraid to get involved because you will have people like you who are going to be there and who are going to be supporting you. That they should do what makes them happy and like pursue like the, if it's amateur astronomy, like the hobby or if it's a career, like the career that makes you happy and not necessarily be afraid of what other people are going to say. Having policy in place so that folks who do go through the process of transitioning while in their industry positions, um, you know, kind of have a paved out, you know, preset path that's really easy to follow and less complicated. If you feel safe and comfortable to do so, you know, really be your authentic self. The big thing is to keep going and um, find out what you can do, you know, what you're comfortable doing. I mean, I think that's one of the trickiest things is try to do something you really like. And I think if you like part of astronomy that's applicable somewhere else, that might be what you really want to do. Yeah, I, I just think it's important to like always remember to stay on track for your goals and don't let anything in, inhibit that or whatnot. So that I think there are like a lot of people stepping, stepping up as allies, but we just need to continue to do that and continue to support it and not just have it be like a moment, but like continue to have it be a movement. There's so much more to then just kind of having a campaign focused on one type of minority. Let's, let's get everybody in, right? No matter who you are. The whole like mandate of what we want to do and our whole goal is to make it so anybody who wants to be a scientist can be a scientist and all this personal stuff about you and what makes you you doesn't matter and is independent of or like doesn't negatively affect at all how the kind of work that you can do. That you know the the humankind is very diverse and, and we are traveling together on this planet Earth like on a chariot and isn't it more better to travel peacefully with others uh, on our journeys and I, I really believe that stars are for everyone. Everybody can look up, you know, and look at the stars, you know, and um, and discover how beautiful this universe is. And I don't think it has anything to do with where you are from, who you love, what you think about yourself, who you are, you know. There's a lot of social change that's being driven by the bravery uh, of young people. And I think that's great. You know, I see so many people who are just coming up in academia who are uh, just so open and honest about who they are. And I'm so proud uh, when I see that and so encouraged when I see that. I want, uh, those young people to hold the rest of us to account. Thank you for pushing us older people to, um, to be more aware 